Have you ever thought about the effect of a hot chamber and a hot bore? Have you ever noticed that maybe your point of impact or your muzzle velocity starts to change after you fired five, six, you know, maybe 10 rounds through a center fire rifle. One of the things I'm looking at today is how to cool that chamber, how to cool the bore to have more shot to shot consistency. So this rifle has not been fired today. It's got a dry, cold bore. I'm gonna check its temperature, if you wanna call it that, right now. I borrowed this from home. Just a good old fashioned thermometer, cooking thermometer. It says it's about 80 degrees out here now. That could be about right, it seems about right. And what we're getting is of course 80 degree ambient temperature inside that bore as well. I also purchased one of these. This is an infrared thermometer. It's an Ames name brand, sold at Harbor Freight. It has very good reviews on it. And I'm curious what this thing is going to say. Giving me about... There's the laser beam inside the bore, inside the chamber. About the same, 80 Point six. Now I set the emissivity down to 0 0.4 to get a good read from the uh, from the steel. Now we're going to shoot some rounds, see how it heats up. Then we're going to use this. This is Rifle Cool. It's made by the same company that makes the Magneto Speed chronograph. And so we're going to make use of this thing as well. Back to fire. Twenty-five, twenty-five. I'm actually starting to see a bit of mirage on that target. I may have to drill down my so I'm not picking that up. Twenty-five fifty-three, and I am going to turn the power down just a little bit. That looks better. Round three, 2539. We've got a fair amount of variability in these. Beautiful. That one went off right. 2543. And round number five. It's going to be getting hot. 98. That's more like it. Cool her off. All right. Okay. Well, this rifle now has been cooling for seven, almost eight minutes. See what we're getting for temperatures now. That's good. Getting about 86 degrees, and we were at the 98 a little bit ago. So in about five, six, seven minutes, it cooled it down nice, um, you know, 10 degrees. And we're ready to go. Twenty-five 
25, 15. That felt good. 25, 30. That felt good. One might have been a little low. Last, that's 2536. There we go. That felt pretty good. 2520. Back on safe. Now let's take the temperature of this thing. 99, 101, 101.4, 101.4. We're gonna let this sit just like we have the other ones, and this time I'm not gonna use the rifle cool. It is 922. We're gonna give it seven minutes and see how it does. It is seven minutes. See what our temperature is here. We were at a hundred and yeah, we're still at ninety nine point six. So we've only dropped about two degrees. Thereabouts in seven minutes, whereas we dropped ten degrees in that same time period or more with the. Uh, rifle cool device that's worth it that's worth it well, let's take a few minutes and take a closer look at this rifle cool now this is made by the same company that makes the magneto speed chronograph as i mentioned earlier and there are a number of different barrel cooling devices out there i did a review of of some of these online uh, some of the videos others have posted and this one really seems to be you know quite good it is pretty simple in design there's a battery uh, CR123 battery right inside here when you're ready to use this of course you're going to insert it uh, into the chamber there's a release button right here now you can let it pop out alternatively and when you're finished with this obviously you'll just push it back in and it locks Alternatively, you can just kind of, you know, guide it out so it doesn't snap. I don't know if that makes too much of a difference. Now the air is going to flow through this thing, and there is a nice filter right here. Uh, and you know, initially you might think, well, you know, who cares about that? But there's, uh, they, they've given some thought to this. If you're shooting in a dusty situation, I think the last thing that you'd want to do is to suck um, air through this that has dust particles and essentially coat the inside of your barrel with those dust or dirt particles. So that's a good design I'd say. Give them a, a plus right there for just thinking about that and by the way they do also give you some additional filters to use when this one um, gets dirty. So that's that's really good. The on off switch is right here and there's a pocket clip if you want to use that. I just set it on the bench next to me when I'm, uh, when I'm using it. Using it is pretty darn simple. Let's say you've just fired a string of rounds. You want to cool this barrel. Just insert it. And it'll stay in there. And then turn it on. Now there's a bit of a high-pitched, if you want to call it that, there's a, there's a sound. There's a little motor inside here, and that motor is going to make some noise. Maybe to some folks this is going to cause you a problem, but for me it doesn't cause a problem. Uh, you know, you're, you're out there at the shooting range, there's a lot of noise out there already uh, from other people shooting. You're going to be wearing earplugs or earmuffs or something like that. And if I walk about... Personally, if I walk about five, six feet away from this thing, I don't even hear this little motor running anymore. 
Now, one of the demonstrations that you sometimes see online uh, is a demonstration about how powerful of a force the air is uh, being uh, moved through the bore. By the way, this is moving air from here to here and ejecting outward. It's not sucking it through, it's pushing the air through. Now that's a better design also, because what you want to do is just keep in mind that warm air rises. And one of the better ways to cool a rifle, if it's possible, is to um, put the rifle while it's cooling in a rifle rack. And a lot of ranges have it. In fact, the range I shoot at has those rifle racks where you can uh, place the rifles vertically while you're not shooting them. The problem is that the range I use, they're not that well built. Some of them are kind of rickety. And I would really, really hate to put this rifle or any of my rifles in that rack and then have it topple over um, during the you know, off session. So I just don't use it. I lay it nice and flat on my rifle, um, on my shooting pad, and that's just how I do it. So, one of the uh, little examples that you see is, you know, this sort of thing. That's pulling the air through there pretty well. I mean, maybe about here, it's not really doing much. When you're finished using it, just turn it off and remove it from the port. Close it up and it's ready to go back into storage or ready to be used again in a little while later. Now obviously this can work very well with bolt action rifles, but you might be wondering, hey, can this also work with an AR-15 type of platform, semi-auto rifles? Well, let's take a look. Once again, we're just going to extend the tube here, place it into the chamber, And this is at a little bit thinner um, opening in this port, but nonetheless, I still have, I think I still have a good seal inside the chamber itself. We'll go ahead and turn it on. We'll see how it functions. Now, bear in mind that both of these rifles have muzzle brakes on them, and uh, this little test that we do with the, uh, with the flame, with the uh, lighter here, um, is going to be affected by the fact that some of the air, and I can feel it right here, uh, is traveling, you know, through this and this and this. Nonetheless, give that a try. We have good air travel through that bore, and it works just fine on AR-15 platforms as well. There we have it. That is the rifle cool barrel cooling device. Thanks for watching.